Shalom, shalom. Good to have you here with us on this Shabbat. Yes, I'm not physically here with you, but I wanted to make sure that these teachings, which are very important to me every year as we go through them, I haven't talked on this for a couple of years, so I wanted to bring it back up. If you take a look at the overhead, you're going to see the destruction of Jerusalem, and it looks like those were Roman soldiers, so it would be the second time. But what a lot of people don't know is that God has seven weeks, okay, seven weeks to, of restoration. And that started, remember, the Tishba Av, which means the ninth of Av was this, the last Wednesday and Thursday, Wednesday night, Thursday, in July. Now here we are weeks later, and um, at my last time in July, I talked a little bit about this, but we're going to take a good look about different things in it, because I want you to understand this, and this is what's really important. God is a God of restoration. Can you say amen to that? He is a God of restoration, and he restores us. Even though we go through very difficulties, trials, Peter talked about it, Kepha, he talked about it, different ones have talked about it, all the difficulties we go through. Our God is a God of restoration. And you couldn't have a more heavy, heavy time than what happened on that last, this year, it changes every year because it's the ninth of Av, the Jewish calendar, and so this year it was the Wednesday night to Thursday, through Thursday night. And so we're going to take a look at all that happened on it. And first of all, as I take a look at it, look, look at these different things that happened on this day to show you that it's so hard on what's happening. Trying to get the overhead up here, and it's not coming up quite yet. But there we go. The 12 spies on the ninth of Av returned, and this is according to the calculations of the rabbis, 10 with a bad report, not a good day, because they just cost themselves, what, 38 more years. And not only that, they cost themselves going into the promised land. So you would say, wow, wow, it started off on this time, and if you look at it Pretty correctly, that's what happened. The destruction in, of Solomon's temple by the Babylonians, and there's the date. The destruction, and that was the most beautiful one. Remember Ezra? They talked about it. Nehemiah, they talked about the rebuilding of it. And it said when they were done rebuilding it, the older ones that knew, they fell down and they cried. Why? Because that was a beautiful, beautiful temple. And also now the destruction of Herod's temple, and that happened by the Romans in 70 A.D. We know a lot of destruction has gone on, and we live in this country where we haven't had a lot of destruction. I know the Civil War destroyed a lot, but from outside different sources, we haven't had a lot of destruction where we were, the homeland was completely attacked. Think about this. Did you know that Jerusalem, they plowed it with salt a year later? Why? Because they couldn't grow anything. You have to be around where there's food. And so the Romans did that. That's another story into itself. Plowed the ground with salt. Destruction of Simon bar Kokhba's army by the Romans. Remember, they thought he was the Messiah. By the way, that, that's the first uh, time that we started splitting, not the first time, I shouldn't say that, but it was towards the beginning where the Messianics and the non-Messianics, the pharisaical group, started splitting because we said, we know who our Messiah is, and his name is Yeshua. You got that right. So, but this was the destruction of the Simon bar Kokopa's army. England, did you know, expelled all the Jews in 1200 A.D.? Wow. Did you know there was a city in England that didn't want that on their head? So it, about 10 years ago, 
Did you know they took up a collection, their city, and they sent it to Israel. They figured what the calculated rate would be for the land right now at this that time, and they sent it to Israel and said, we don't want this on our heads. Isn't that something? You know, I, I like to hear those sort of things. So England expels the Jews in 1200 AD. Spain expels all Jews in 1492. Isn't that when it says Columbus sailed the deep blue or something like that? I don't know. If some people say he was Jewish. Who knows? World War I is declared. We're getting a lot closer to us. On this day in 1914, not too long ago in the annals of history, but because of all of that, you might get depressed. If Let's say you, you say, I've done all these things, and it's like my health has failed me. It's come against me. And so that you might get discouraged. Maybe it's finances. You planned on having a, a retirement. You planned on having, even at a younger age, a home that you would enjoy. And then all of a sudden, unexpected things happen. And it seems like it always happens at the wrong time. Well, that's what had happened here. Look at those things that are listed there. But our God, who he is, look at the seven weeks of comfort. It might be a little hard to read, but starting, you see the ninth of Av, we just talked about that at the end of July right there, but really it started Wednesday night. But take a look at the red circles. You should count seven of them meaning it's complete restoration. Why? Because we're getting ready for Rosh Hashanah. Okay, Yom Teruah, as it's called, the day of the blast. God wants his people restored, and he wants you restored. didn't happen all at once, but it did happen, because God still has, can we say amen to this when I say it? Get ready to say amen. God still has a plan for Israel. Amen. Thank you for that. And that's what we're going to look at it. And we're going to look at the seven readings. There they are. Nahum, Nahum, Am, E. In fact, that was pretty much the Torah portion, the first Torah portion at the end of July. So it says, comfort my people. But Zion says, and then I'm just going to read the English to you, storm, rad, ragged city, rage, storm, rage city, I will set and he talks about the emeralds and the gems. And it says, I like this one. I, yes, I. Anochi, anochi. Uh, yes, I am I. And he's the one who restores us. Seeing barren woman. We're going to take a look at that this time at, on this Shabbat. Arise, shine. You know what that is. Kumi ori. Okay, rise and shine. So it's the cease, is the last. I will rejoice greatly. We're going to take a look at a couple of these. Next week, we'll take a look at one more of them. But I want you to understand, from the end of July until all the way through August, the first couple weeks in September is a wonderful time of realizing God does restore. Let's take our Bibles or take your electronic device and we're, we're going to hold it up before the Lord or your hand that holds a Bible. And Yeshua said this in Matthew 24, 35, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Do you believe that? Amen to that. Amen. Praise God. Lord, I just pray that as we take a look at how you restore people, that, Lord, we just, if we need that right at this moment, and who doesn't need restoration? Lord, I'm so glad. You're the God of, of the re's, revival, restoration, regeneration. You are a God that just, you pick us up when we're down. You meet us when we have that need. Lord, thank you that for these times of restoration. And Lord, uh, I think from the last time I ever talked about this until now, this country needs restoration. This country, Lord God, it, what have we done? Oh, Lord, let us not forget you're a God 
of restoration. Amen. Let's go on to it now. You've looked at these. If you wanted to take a picture of it, you can, but it'll be there for next week. But we're going to take a look at that seeing barren woman. And Psalms talking about singing, chapter 81, verse 2 or verse 1. It says, sing for joy to God our strength. Do we forget to do that at times? Do we forget to ask the Lord for joy in our hearts? For the joy of the Lord is our, you got it, strength. Sing for joy to God our strength. Shout to the God of Yahweh. Some people, when it comes to meeting with God, we're very quiet. We don't say too much because someone might think we're a little out there. Well, we're messianics. We are out there. Remember, the fruit is out on the limb. And so sing for joy to God our strength. Well, you just did that earlier on this Shabbat. You were singing not to us, but you were singing for joy to God. And that's what it is. Remember, so on this restoration you start singing. You start saying, Lord, even though everything has been everywhere I look, it's like everything's a mess. We sing to God our strength. So it starts off with that Isaiah 54. Remember this on that one. Okay? It's the fifth one where it says, Roni Acharach, Acharach, sing barren woman. You might not have felt like singing. But then he goes on and Chapter 2, enlarge the space of your tent. Have you ever heard somebody, I've heard people give prophecies, God saying to you, enlarge the space of your tent. You know something? I don't mind when somebody says things are going to get more and more. Now, let me tell you something. All my life, it seems like my married life, we bought homes that are a little bigger and a little bigger and a little bigger. And now we want to decrease the space of our tent. <laughs> and we have all of it, but we filled it up. But I know it's not meaning that. Extend the curtains of your dwelling. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Make your tent pegs firm. In other words, the Lord is saying, I'm going to fill you. I'm going to strengthen you. You're going to have more than enough. Uh, can we, if you agree with that, give the Lord a hand. Amen to that. All right. I skip down to verse... Four, don't be afraid, for you won't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. You know, fear is a big thing. We wonder, can I trust God? All these things have happened. Can I trust God? Well, yes, you can. Don't be discouraged. You see the first three letters in front of courage? Discouraged. That's the biggest, to me, that's the nuclear bomb that the enemy uses. He wants you discouraged. You know why? Because you won't even try. Why, why care? In other words, the enemy won because you gave up by default. So he's telling you, don't be discouraged, for you will not be disgraced. None of us as believers are going to be disgraced. When the King of kings and the Lord of lords comes, we're going to be laughing and smiling. We thought we were dreaming, it talks about in the scriptures. And it'll be a great thing. God doesn't put his people to disgrace. For you won't be disgraced. You'll forget the shame of your youth. And oh boy, the youth. I'll tell you what. There's a lot that you wish you could forget. But it says you will forget the shame of your youth. You need to have that behind you so that we can walk forward. No longer remember the dishonor of being widowed. And that means... You were separated. And I'll say this, you were separated from God. Oh, but not now. You won't. This is a time of restoration. Listen, if you need restoration, you've been separated from God. You've gone through health problems. You've gone through monetary problems. Whatever it is, let God work in you. This is the time that's designated for that. Do you think it's just by chance there's seven Shabbats in between the destruction of Jerusalem and Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is a time of joy. Don't you know that's when we celebrate the coming of a king? We blow shofars. That's the civil, okay, new year. But it, nevertheless, it's the year 
my rabbi used to tell me, David, this is the time of the birthday of the earth. In fact, he would always say, but it's not just the earth because who would know? Because no one's alive. He said this was the birth and the time of Adam and Eve to come to earth. That's how he looked at it. For it says, and we've talked about this before, for your husband is your maker, okay? And that making, okay, is a verb. He's still making you. This is the time of restoration. When you restore something, you wish it would happen in a day. Not always. But you're being restored. 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 I want you to keep hearing that word. Adonai Sabaoth, that's the Lord of hosts. His power is his name. You know, I like it when I hear Adonai Sabaoth. That means there's power. Something's going to happen. The Lord of hosts, the Lord of the armies, the God, he can do it. And so he's letting you know is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer, the Holy One, the set-apart one. He's personal. This isn't just to talk out loud to all these people and say, hey, I can do all these things, but he's personal with you. He wants you to have a personal relationship with him. He will be called the God of all the earth. Who? The Holy One of Israel. He'll be called the God. I'm waiting for that day. So many people have made up so many different gods. Ah. And it's like, I don't know how they worship them. Or they've got great distortions of who our God is. It says the Holy One of Israel. And he is holy. And that's why he's been so tough on Israel. Because he is the God of Israel. But he's your God too. It says, is your Redeemer. He will be called the God of the whole earth. I want to hear that name. I want to hear that name of the God of the whole earth. His name is Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. He's the God of the whole earth. So as we go on on this, for the mountains may leave and hills be removed, okay, and Gaver, whatever it is, the smaller ones. But, you know, mountains represent usually kingdoms. And so when it says they lay flat or they're removed, that means all these kingdoms are gone may be removed, but my grace. Look at this. I'm going to stop. Let's read it together. My grace will never leave you. Let's say it again. My grace will never leave you. Turn to somebody and say and insert, God's grace will never leave you. Do it right now. God's grace will never leave you. That grace doesn't mean you earned it. That grace means he loves you. And you accepted his love in the face of Yeshua, his grace. My covenant of peace will not be removed. You know, we have a peace that passes all understanding. A completion between us and the Father. It was made possible by Yeshua. It says Adonai, he has compassion, compassion on you. Look at these words of restoration. Is it doing anything to you? Do you feel it in your heart? Yes, God has compassion on me. He's not there to try and make your life so bad. And you say, well, look at what has happened. Well, look at what happened to Israel. They've had a lot, a lot, a lot, and all in one day, struggles. He has compassion on you. When you talk to God, appeal to his compassion. Say, Lord, I know you love me. I need your compassion. Not that he wouldn't give it to you, but he says he will. Then remind him that he's a Gracious God who has compassion. My grace will never leave you. Notice how grace and compassion are kind of in the same verse together. That's our God. That's why he does it. There was a guy, he wasn't really a king, but his name was Jehoshaphat. 
And so he, Jehoshaphat, appointed those who would sing to Adonai. They called him back from the um, wilderness. He used to be kind of like, uh, I'll just use a term that's familiar with us, a Robin Hood type guy, because <laughs> they didn't really want him. He, they learned to do that. So Je- he, he learned to fight. Jehoshaphat appointed those who would sing to Adonai and praise. Look at what's going on on this restoration. Singing to the Lord, and praise. Those are two huge words. You sing to the Lord, and you praise. Don't tell me you can't at least praise God by telling him how great he is, how wonderful he is, that even though you don't know what's going on, even right now, you can sing to the Lord. It doesn't have to be some big, long song, but he is our God. He is the God of all singing and praise the splendor of his holiness as they went out ahead of the army see before fighting and if you're in a battle right now there it is sing and praise praise the splendor of his holiness how great he is before you go out to battle look at that as they went out ahead of the army saying there it is give thanks to the lord give thanks to adonai for his grace continues forever could you see our military going out before the enemy and they're all singing give thanks to adonai for his grace continues forever can you see thousands upon thousands of military from the marines to the navy to the air force that you see these type of things Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His grace continues forever. Give thanks to Adonai, for his grace continues forever. And as we continue on, guess what happened then? I like this scripture portion, because as they're singing and praising, then during, then, then during the time when they were singing and praising, during the time, sometimes, you know, it's not just like one minute, You can praise God really throughout the day, even if it's quiet in your heart. It says right here, and they're praising, Adonai brought a surprise attack against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come to fight Yehuda. They were defeated. It was the enemy coming at them. Maybe the enemy's coming at you right now. But they were defeated. Hallelujah to that. We need to give the Lord a hand again. They were defeated. But it's as they're singing and praising. Don't forget to do that. Jehoshaphat did the right thing. You know, there's even more. And I want to go to another scripture reference. Jonah, you talk about a person that needed restoration. He needed restoration. Look at it. While in Jonah 2, while I was fainting away, you'd be fainting away too if you were in a fish. I like the way it's put that way. That's the NASB translation. While I was fainting away, I remembered the Lord. Sometimes we try to escape. Sometimes maybe what's been happening lately, a lot of people have been leaving, worshiping God and being loyal to him. They were fainting away. I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came to you in your heart holy temple as those things have happened i came to you i remembered the lord is this a time of remembering god remembering as we just looked at it this way has it been a while since you've been singing and praising god while i was fainting away i remembered the lord and my prayer came to you look at it's personal in your holy temple think of the times back when you met with God in a congregation, maybe it was in your home, and you just felt the presence of God. You were so full of joy, and it was so wonderful, and it was in there. And, <coughs> excuse me, the Lord is a wonderful God. Jonah chapter 2, verse 8. Those who regard vain idols forsake their faithfulness. We all have had to deal with idols. They come in different looks, different ways. But those who regard vain idols, in other words, they place more importance on the things of this life than the creator of all of those things. 
You forsake your faithfulness. You're not faithful to God. But that story doesn't end there because even Jonah said this, but I, va'ani, but I. I'm glad that it didn't stop with that verse. But we go on to verse 9. I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. That's awful hard to say with what he's going through at this time. I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I don't know about you, but if you're going through struggles, sometimes it can be very hard to come out with a voice of thanksgiving. That which I have vowed, I will pay. Salvation is from the Lord. Remember, he's saying Yeshua is from the Lord, our salvation. But I wanted to show you at this time of restoration the different ways that God uses you. He works with you. While you're singing and praising, he comes and he's restoring you. Yes, it can be hard. Maybe you can only get out a few words. But you can also say, Lord, I thank you that you do love me. That might be the hardest thing you can say because of what you're going through. But say it and reach out to him and just say, Lord, I want your restoration. I want you. I thank you that I can come to you for this. Do you see what it says? But I will sacrifice to you. That's We just read it with the voice of thanksgiving. From salvation is of the Lord. It got cut off there. But then, then the Lord. And that's why I put a line there. Ve omer Adonai. He says, but I'm going to give you thanksgiving. Then the Lord, there it goes again. Then the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah up onto the dry land. But it was during him giving thanksgiving, not just saying, oh, man, Lord, why are you doing this to me? It's a bad time, a kvetching. He, he knew he was guilty. But instead of doing that, the Lord didn't want him to live out his life in, in a fish. He probably wanted him to eat fish, not live his life out in a fish. But I like that term. You know, when you're praising God and you have a voice of thanksgiving, it says the fish vomited Jonah up onto dry land. Things start changing. Amen to that. And it'll change in your life. We're getting close to the end of this teaching. But I want you to know that this was very important for me to come at this time and to teach this because this is a time we've been through a lot hopes dash election cycles are coming up it's going to go crazy look at what's going on in israel they've got people uh, it's the opposite of the supreme court what's going on they have soldiers that are refusing to serve anymore they have all sorts of different high level officials they're saying, we're not going to be with Israel. But I can guarantee you this, with a war, they'll come together. Because if not, when we're persecuted people, we come together. But look what's going on. A lot of times I look at Israel. And the reason I look at Israel is I say, this is what's happening in the physical of what's going on in the spiritual. Man, you couldn't, you, you couldn't rile up the people any more than they're riled up. I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen in the future, but I know one thing. Things are all tense in the spiritual world. All that's going on. So let's, we go back to the beginning where it says, Sing, barren woman. In other words, I haven't showed much in my life, but I can sing. The Lord said to sing to him, to give him praise Psalms chapter 5, verse 12 or 11, depending how you look on that. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. You need to take refuge in him. Yes, you don't, it may not have this, oh, well, ha hallelujah, you know. Maybe you can, but you can rejoice in knowing that you have God. And at this time of restoration, sing. Give God thanksgiving. Praise his holiness and who he is. It says in you, let me start over with this verse, but let all who take refuge in you rejoice. 
Let them forever shout for joy. If you want to shout hallelujah, now's the time to do it. Hallelujah. Shelter them and they will be glad. Who? Who's he talking to? Look at the last few words. Those who love your name. Wow. Those who love your name. Let all who take refuge in you rejoice. We love the name Yeshua. There is no other name that man might be saved. It's the greatest of names. I know people are always trying to look for some kind of a, um, how should I say, the actual holiness of the name. To me, I have the name. His name is Yeshua. I love that name. When I hear the name Yeshua, it does something to my heart. It gives me strength. So it says, let them forever shout for joy. Shelter them and they will be glad. Those who love your name. I want his name to be so strong in your life that when you hear that name, something just happens to you. Yeshua, how wonderful it is. And if you don't know that name, I'm going to clear the screen here. And if you don't know that name of Yeshua, let me tell you. There we go. Because I want you to focus on me right now. I want you to just understand, if you haven't given your heart to Yeshua, you need to learn to love that name. That name is the name that's going to save you. That name is the name that restores you for eternity. You'll hear that name, and it'll be so precious to you, so wonderful. If you think of forsaking that name, don't do it. That name, Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, is the most precious thing you have because it is the name that saves. I want you to stand up right at this time as we get prepared for some singing and the worship team will come up here. I'm going to offer up a prayer. Lord, for those who are discouraged, for those, Lord God, that have had a lot of things happen this summer even, or in the past, Lord, I just pray, oh, holy Lord, that you'll just restore them greatly. But Lord, let them know they, they need to do their part, and that's to come to you and to sing unto you, to exalt your holy name, to realize you have not abandoned them, for you're in the process of restoration Lord, you're not in the process of ruination to destroy people. Lord, if there's someone listening to my voice at this time and they haven't accepted you, may their hearts become tender. May they realize that the world isn't going to change. It's not going to change. The world has a way of doing business, and it's not your way. So, Lord, I just pray during this time of restoration, that they would be renewed, that they would have a new heart. Lord, may they say, Yeshua, come into my life, forgive me of my sins. I have not considered your ways. I have come against your ways. I have sinned. But I know that you're a God who forgives. Forgive me. I want you in my life. Come into my life, Yeshua, at this moment. I now want to say I belong to you. You're my God. And I know that your spirit will guide me and lead me. May I bring glory through him, your spirit. Him meaning your son, Yeshua, for all that he has done for me. Thank you. Restore me. I belong to you. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for joining us on this time, whether you're watching us on live stream. It's wonderful. Don't forget, this is the time of restoration. Next week, we'll talk more about restoration. Isn't he a good God? Can we say amen? Amen.